The game starts off with Link and Zelda exploring beneath Hyrule Castle. We get attacked by some bats and I am able to protect us. Princess Zelda sees some murals on the wall that show the history of Hyrule and she's very excited and a bit freaked out that this information is down here. We go deeper into the cave and run into some kind of demon king with a glowing arm holding him down. The arm falls off and the demon king starts to wake up. He tries to attack Zelda but being the hero that I am, I jump in the way and that reduces my max health down to only three hearts and it destroys my sword and damages my right arm. The floor starts collapsing, Zelda falls away, we dive for Zelda but we of course can't save her, but we are saved by a glowing blue hand. We wake up in some cave and our arm is replaced. We take our damaged master sword, we find a treasure chest with some legwear in this cave and we find some light that looks like an exit to the start of the game, which has got to give you a similar feeling to what happens when you first reach the main world in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But but in this game, unlike in real life, you're safe if you land in water from any height. So Link takes a brave jump down and we see the game's logo as Link falls through the sky. We are now in a place called Great Sky Island. We see our first robot enemy here and after a moment of fighting, our master sword runs out of energy. I'm worried that I won't be able to finish off this first enemy that we see, but we find a tree branch and we can take him out. I need this guy that looks like the Pokemon Metagross that transforms into a giraffe and this one is actually friendly, it's not an enemy, and it gives me an iPad that I can use as a map. We are told that Princess Zelda is in the Temple of Time, and on our way to the temple, we come across these ostriches, and they give you meat when you defeat them. When we finally make it to the Temple of Time, we actually can't enter it. We have to go to the three shrines on the island first so that our arm has enough light power, and we find out that the guy who gave us our new arm is called Rora. At the first shrine, we get the Ultra Hand ability, which lets us move and combine objects and create anything we can imagine, like a bridge or a wooden board attached to a zip line that you have to use. And I almost completely fell apart here when I was using this. Can I jump while doing this? Yes, yes, now just don't fall off, don't fall off. Wait, why am I whistling like that? Ah, no! Whoa! Man, we made it! As we make our way to the next shrine, there's a bit of a gap where a bridge should be, and one log isn't long enough to cover the gap, so we actually have to merge together two logs using the Ultra Hand ability to make it across. It's a pretty cool little puzzle. There was a lake that we had to get across, but we don't have enough stamina to be able to swim across, so I glued together some logs and basically used these logs as stepping stones to make it across the lake, stepping onto one log and then stepping onto the next log bridge. The second ability that you get is called Fuse, and it lets you fuse nearby objects, like rocks and boulders, onto your weapons and shields so that you can smash through stone barriers. We have a kind of mini boss fight against a Zonai construct in this second shrine, and we're given something called an energy cell after the second shrine, which we will use soon. On my way to the third shrine, I did a jump attack for the first time, and that dealt massive damage to some enemies that were battling each other. As we were heading to the third shrine, it looked like we had to go through a cave, but I decided to walk over and around the cave, and we saw an island off to the side with a treasure chest. There was an extremely strong enemy guarding the chest, so I took it upon myself to perform a stealth mission using these floating blocks. We could control these floating blocks with our Ultra Hand ability, and it's kind of like what we did with the logs in the lake before, where you move one, then you step onto it, then you move the previous one in front of you, and you step onto that, and so on and so on, using them like stepping stones. We got an amber from the treasure chest, and you can essentially go wherever you want by moving one floating island and climbing up onto it, and then moving the second floating island. Before we got to the third shrine, we came across something called a Zonai Device Dispenser, which takes materials you get from defeating some enemies, and it gives you some items that you can use, like items that spit out fire or blow wind or other useful tools that you could use. One more distraction that we ran into before the third shrine was this Korok that was separated from his friend and we had to get this Korok across to the next island. To get this Korok across these rails to the other island we had to take a minecart that was nearby, we had to glue a fan to it using our special ability and propel ourselves across to the other side because you can't move objects while you are standing on them. As we kept making our way to the third shrine, Link got to a cold area and he started taking damage from being in the cold. What I often do when I'm in the cold in Breath of the Wild and this game, which might be a bit unconventional apparently, is instead of eating food that keeps me warm or looking for clothes that keep me warm, I run as far as I can, 
die from the cold, respawn hopefully near where I died, and repeat that process until I get somewhere that isn't cold. Next, we got to a cave, and I found some bomb flowers here, and we found a terrifying monster called a like-like that looks like a giant worm that wants to eat you. A really fun way to damage it is to put down bomb flowers and have it accidentally eat the bomb flowers when it tries to eat you, and then you can deal a lot of damage onto it. I continued through the cave and had the biggest jump scare I've ever had in this game. I did not expect to see this second like light. Wow, flame emitter shield? Is that a shield that emits flames based on the name? That's what <laughs> oh man, that actually jump scared me, oh man. After going through the cave and doing some climbing, we made it to shrine number three, where we got the ability called Ascend. This lets you rise up through a ceiling material that is above you, which sounds incredibly useful in a lot of situations. After completing the third shrine, we were told by Rora that we should now be able to enter the Temple of Time, and I wanted to fast travel to a nearby shrine to make it back to the Temple of Time, but we haven't unlocked the ability to fast travel yet, so we actually have to walk over to the Temple of Time. We can teleport nearby to this shrine. Wait, can I? Hey! Hey, can I not fast travel? I thought that I could fast travel to shrines. No! As we were heading to the Temple of Time, I decided to use Ascend up here, and we came by a treasure chest that gave us some frost resistance pants, which are super useful. We got a new Zonai device called a wing device, and I had no idea how to make it start flying. And then we came across some other wing devices that were nearby, and we flew across towards the Temple of Time, which must have saved us a bit of time in comparison to just walking back. So now that we visited all three shrines that we were told to visit, we can finally enter the Temple of Time. Once we enter, we do see Princess Zelda. She touches our hand and our arm starts to glow and she disappears into a beam of light and we get a new ability. Our new ability allows us to reverse time of objects such as gears or other moving objects. So now we have to continue through the Temple of Time to look for Princess Zelda. We see a goddess statue up ahead, similar to the ones you might've seen in Breath of the Wild where you can get more health or stamina if you offer it for spirit orbs. But in this game, we only have three light of blessings right now, so we can't do anything, and there's a door ahead of us. As we push this door, we take damage, and even though we weren't at full health, the point of this door is to try to prevent you from getting through if you don't have at least four hearts. Rora appears and tells us that there's actually one more shrine on the island, and we can fast travel now. So we teleport to the Room of Awakening, which is where we woke up with the damaged Master Sword near the start of the game, and I somehow found a very good spot to use the Ascend ability, which brought us up very high and took us almost almost straight to the final shrine that we needed to go to. In this shrine, we use our new rewind time ability on the rafts that are heading downstream so that we can head back upstream, and we even managed to head up a waterfall while time is moving backward. After getting the final light of blessing and heading back to this statue, it's funny that the only option that you could choose here is another heart container. You can't choose to boost your fatigue meter. The game doesn't let you choose to boost your stamina because otherwise you would trap yourself behind this door and it wouldn't be possible to progress through the game unless there's some glitch or unforeseen way to get past with only three hearts. If you push this door with your four hearts, you'll end up with one quarter of a heart left and the door opens, so it looks like you have just enough health to open this door. We go across a path that's kind of like a bridge and we have to use the ascend ability a few times to make it to the end, and there's a ball of light waiting for us. Link takes out his damaged master sword, he puts his master sword into the ball of light, and all of a sudden we see Princess Zelda holding the master sword. It starts pulsing when it's in her hands, and I can't tell if it's also getting bigger. We are back to Link, we hear a noise, and something that looks like the new dragon Pokemon from Pokemon Violet flies by. We hear Zelda calling out to us that we have to find her, and we see Hyrule down below us, and we have to jump down to Hyrule to start with this part of the game. I've played about 12 hours of this game so far, and this video was how far I got in the first three hours of playing this game. My full playthrough of this game and other videos that you might enjoy are in the pinned comment of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day ahead of you, and take care, everybody.